Join Tom Snyder on his Celebrity Spotlight for exclusive interviews with James Cagney, Eric Estrada, Carol O'Connor, and Priscilla Presley. Next, after Debbie Boone. Morning television will never be the same with the premiere of The David Letterman Show. Comedy, interviews, performers, and more. It's live and lively. The David Letterman Show, weekdays on NBC. Good evening. The two-day summit conference is over tonight in Venice, and seven Western leaders are calling it a major success. All agreed to find alternative sources of energy, and all condemn the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Another drop in the prime lending rate. The Morgan Guarantee Trust Company of New York lowered the prime to 11 and a half. It was as high as 20 percent just last April. Now this. Bassagran herbicide consistently controls common ragweed. For clean, healthy soybeans, Bassagran, the height of confidence from BASF Wyandotte. Radar is clear. Looks like beautiful weather ahead. Join us at 11 o'clock from New Center 13 for the nightly news. Why are so many area men and women join 21st Century Health Spa? Well, I joined 21st Century Health Spa to get into shape. It's uh, pretty difficult working out back at the house. I tried to diet and lose weight, but I just can't do it alone. So this has really helped me out a lot. Because it has done so much for my circulation. The 21st Century Health Spas are having a special summer shape-up program. Enroll now, 13 visits, only $6.99. That's right, only $6.99. Call or stop by your nearest 21st Century Health Spa today. Until now, we microwaves just bounced around microwave ovens. And we've missed a spot here and there. So you had to turn the food. What a bother. The energy-saving Amana radar range has changed all that. Gave us microwaves a sense of direction. With the exclusive Rotowave cooking system. A rotating shower of power that cooks more evenly and cooks most foods faster than ever before. The Amana Rotowave cooking system. The big difference in microwave ovens. Available at Appliance Center, Anthony Wayne Trail at Detroit, and Cliff Clark Incorporated, 4102 Monroe. Tic-tac-toe tonight at 7.30 on 13 Strong. This is NBC. Hi, I'm Carol Morano, an NBC telephone switchboard supervisor. I've been here 21 years, and I want to welcome the David Letterman Show. Can I just say one thing? Don't do a lousy show. The show is good. The switchboards are quiet. The show is rotten. I have to listen to the gripes. I don't need that kind of heat. It's the David Letterman Show, live with Valerie Bromfield, Edie McClure, Bob Sarlat, Edward Newman with NBC News, and Frank Owens and the David Letterman Symphony Orchestra. Plus David's guests, Esther Satterfield, Jane and Michael Stern, Hester Mundas, and Will Schreiner. And now, please welcome the man who loves cat dancing but isn't quite sure what that is, David Letterman. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very nice of you folks. Good morning and welcome to the uh, television program here. Uh, my name is David Letterman and uh, I'm just going to say one more thing about my haircut. Um, <laughs> you remember when you were in high school or something and you had like a big date, uh, probably the best looking girl in North America, and you went in that afternoon for a haircut and you came out uh, looking like a full-blown duck? Well, <laughs> it's one of those unwritten laws of science and uh, they have assured me that this will one day grow out and I'll be able to lead a normal, productive life. Um, I understand in Belgium there is a man who is experimenting now with a permanent haircut. You get it when you're about 18 and uh, you maybe change it once or twice during your lifetime. So I'm looking forward to talking with that gentleman. Let me explain something here. I just noticed our studio audience, probably the only studio audience in television that brings reading material. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Could we, just a minute. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen. How about, quite a recommendation for the show, huh? <laughs> Planning to be in the audience at the David Letterman Show? I better take along something to amuse yourselves. <laughs> Is this your paper? Oh, don't let me interrupt you, son. If you, 
he's, he's doing homework here. It's, um, uh, also, I wanted to mention uh, just briefly about this suit. Now, what, does this suit look all right to you, folks? <laughs> I, it, something's, yeah, I don't know, is the leg is, uh, that's actually the way my leg is shaped, is a problem, but um, now yesterday I looked kind of like a German insurance salesman, and uh, today I look, I, I remind myself a little bit of an FBI agent, you know, you get that kind of, uh, we'll get that problem ironed out too, we're just trying to highlight the, uh, the wrinkles in the new show. Um, we got a wonderful uh, program for you, I'm going to tell you more about it. Uh, first of all, let me explain something technical to you. Some people in the United States see part of this show, others see more than a part of the show, and uh, some people don't see any of it. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that is exactly, but because of that fact, what we're going to do today is select somebody here to keep a running account of what's transpiring. Uh, we're looking for somebody to keep minutes of this show. Now, uh, what this does, it enables you to go about your business there in the house and then later rush back in for the last 30 seconds of the show and be appraised of what's transpired. And do you mind standing? Oh, no, sorry. What is your name? Sally Bostoff. Sally Bostoff. Yes. Where are you from, Sally? I'm from Valley Stream. Valley Stream, Denmark, huh? Right. <laughs> I haven't seen that woman in years. Where is Valley Stream? Uh, Long Island. Oh, I'm sorry, Long Island. Why are you sorry? Well, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not your fault. No, I know it's all. <laughs> Yes, it's quite a life in Valley Stream, ladies and gentlemen, and we have lots for sale for you and the family. Um, no, I'm sure Valley Stream is a nice community. Lovely. Yeah, what do you, what do, you do for a living? Not much. I'm a, oh, I'm a mother and a, ha uh, a housewife. It's kind of an afterthought. Uh, trouble at home, Sally? No, no, I just try to forget it as often as possible. <laughs> Sally, I don't think you're the lady for the job. You have too much on your mind. Have a seat, but thank you very much for being here. What is your name? Do you mind standing? No, not at all. I guess I asked those questions in the wrong order, didn't I? <laughs> Do I mind? Let's try it all over again. You're right. <laughs> Get this completely screwed up. Now, um, hi. Do you mind standing? No. Thank you very much. We have rehearsal, too. Hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, what is your name? My name is Carol Ringon. Carol, I'm sorry? Ringon. I'm sorry. Again, I keep apologizing. Don't Forgive me. Sorry. Don't have to be sorry about that either. Spell your last name, Carol. R-I-N-G-O-E-N. -E Correct. Bob, what have we got for? Car. No, you don't get the brand new car. Where are you from? San Francisco. Oh, that's quite a ways from here. You must be on vacation. Yes, yes. and business with my husband. What, what kind of business are you in? He's in business. I keep him happy. That's my business. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the oldest business, too, isn't it? When you, uh, what was your name again? I forgot. Carol. Carol. I'm going to ask you, do you mind hold that? Go ahead. Say hello to the folks back in San Francisco, if you like, Carol. Hi, folks. Oh, boy, back oh, home. Boy, oh, boy, she's saying hello. <laughs> now, sir, do you mind doing this? If you, don't mi if you mind, we'll get somebody else to do this. Okay, I mind. <laughs> Now I'm stuck with a kid here with the magazine. We... I'd love to take notes. There you go. What an attitude, huh, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, now let me... This is the official NBC uh, pencil. And what does it say? Think. 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 Safety. Safety. That's, of course, uh, I guess the huge explosion in the audience yesterday that you all heard about. Uh, there you go. Just And uh, what would, I would like you to do is just sit there and in as much detail as you can uh, figure out, indicate what's going on on today's show, and then we'll talk to you at the end. Thank you very much okay. for cooperating. Thank you very much for being here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll continue our show in, uh, well, just a minute or two. Edwin Newman will be here with an NBC News update right after this, right? Thank you very much, folks. Thank you so much. What do doctors recommend to avoid constipation? These days, doctors stress the importance of fiber in the diet. Food fiber that helps the system regulate itself naturally. Metamucil is made from natural fiber, no chemical stimulants. So for occasional constipation, doctors recommend Metamucil more often than any other laxative. The way to overcome constipation is the natural way. But if not nature, Metamucil. 
Nine Lives presents Morris. The castle's almost finished, Your Majesty. Good. Reserve the dungeon for yourself. Here's the enchanted tower. This is her second childhood today. Hungry, Morris? Lower the drawbridge. I'm leaving. Don't be finicky. There's Nine Lives. Hark. The sea winds bring a message. Liver and chicken, savory stew. Nine Lives savory stew. Mm. Nine Lives, nutritious foods cats really like. Even Morris. Only fit for a king, Nine Lives. Oh, these freckles. Is there anything that'll help fade them? Porcelana, the medicated fade cream. Lately, I've had these awful-looking brown patches. What can I do about them? Try Porcelana, the fade cream. They call these age spots. I call them ugly, but what's a woman to do? Rub in Porcelana. Helps fade age spots, sun freckles, and those dark patches associated with childbearing years. Porcelana helps lighten brown patches to more closely match your natural skin tone. No more vinegar and water douches for me. They're such a bother. Jane, look. Massengill has a vinegar and water disposable douche. It's convenient. Vinegar and water? The ingredients many doctors recommend. But this is pre-mixed, pre-measured, sanitary. No more bother. Look how cleverly it's designed. Only Massengill has this special design. The vinegar and water disposable from Massengill. It's specially designed. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, one of the real uh, neat features uh, about the television program is we get uh, news updates twice a day from one of the best in the business. Uh, here now is Edwin Newman. Thank you, David. Here is the news. Cost of living went up by nine-tenths of one percent last month. That's about the same as in April. Food was down again, but beverages were up and they're expected to go higher in the months ahead. Gasoline dropped by six-tenths of one percent, but that'll cost more, too, because of recent OPEC increases. And the cost of financing a house went up if you had a conventional mortgage, even though VA and FHA rates were down. A special government panel was called in this morning to approve an immediate cash loan of $500 million to Chrysler. Later this year, another billion will be made available to help Chrysler stay alive. President Carter arrived this morning in Yugoslavia and placed a wreath at the grave of Marshal Tito. Mr. Carter was welcomed by a 21-gun salute as he arrived in Belgrade, and he had this to say about Yugoslavia. Especially as now, well. at a time when the principles of equality, non-interference, and territorial inviolability are threatened, Yugoslavia's steadfast defense of the principles of the United Nations and of a non-aligned movement takes on new importance. Secretary of State Muskie arrived today in Turkey for talks with other NATO members about modernizing nuclear missile forces in Europe. Vietnamese gunners shot down two Thai aircraft today in fighting along the Thailand-Cambodia border. The Vietnamese attacked yesterday to push Cambodian refugees farther into Thailand and hospitals there are said to be mobbed with wounded. In Moscow, the Supreme Soviet went into session today. Leonid Brezhnev, looking to be in good health, got a standing ovation. North Korea and South Korea met in the truce village of Panmunjom for talks on reunification. Little was said about that. The meeting was devoted mostly to name-calling. On my way to work this morning, I saw hundreds of people staring at New York's latest site. That's the damage left by a fire last night that broke out on the 20th floor of a 42-floor skyscraper. The fire was out of control for about three hours. Eleven firemen and a building employee wound up in a hospital with heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation. There was no panic, and people trapped in the floors above the fire took instructions by telephone about what to do until they could be brought out. New York's fire commissioner said the building had no sprinkler system. None was required. David? What, what will uh, become from, of the building from the side of the fire up. Will, they, will that be safe now, do they know? Uh, well, they, they had it roped off this morning. There were a lot of policemen around keeping people back because glass was, had fallen out last night. Uh, this is a, what is called a fireproof building, and it's interesting because, uh, <laughs> because uh, even when you have a fireproof building and the fire doesn't burn, what is in it burns. I see. And uh, so there, there was a good deal of danger last night. It was remarkable that, that nobody was Nobody killed. was uh, seriously yeah, injured yeah. at that. Uh, have you ever, you mentioned uh, Leonid Brezhnev received a standing ovation? Yes. Have you ever had a standing ovation? 
Uh, no, I got a big welcome from Leonard Brezhnev. Out. <laughs> well, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, I've never, I've never had one either, so that may be something for our audience to keep in mind for both of us <laughs> as, as uh, we continue. Thank you very much, Edwin Newman. NBC News will be back later in the program with another NBC News update. Uh, coming up on the show, we have John, uh, Jane, and Michael Stern. Jane and Michael Stern. They've written books about interesting features of America. We'll be talking with them in a couple of minutes. There's a cake so moist, it's called Super Moist. There's a frosting so creamy, it's called Creamy Deluxe. Put them together and... Bake someone happy. You and Betty Crocker can bake someone happy. Bake a smile for someone you care for. With the moistness of Super Moist and the creaminess of Creamy Deluxe. You and Betty Crocker can bake someone happy. Jane, I want that dog out of this house. Why? Because it's not our dog, it's the Jensen's. Ever since you fed him that new homestyle blend dog food, he thinks this is his home. It must be the beef, chicken, and egg flavors of homestyle blend. He thinks we're family. Well, I'm busting up the family. Homestyle blend has such wholesome goodness and nutrition. Uh, well, let him get his wholesome goodness at home. New Purina homestyle blend. Home is where the homestyle is. Oh, not more dog. What ragu did for spaghetti, ragu cooking sauce does for everything else. Yes, it's not for spaghetti, it's the ragu for chicken and chops. Mmm. Yes, it's not for spaghetti, it's the ragu for meatball for stuff. Terrific, Ma. Yes, it's not for spaghetti, it's the ragu for stewing and steak. That's some sauce. Yes, it's not for spaghetti, but for everything else it's just great. Ragu cooking sauce in four delicious varieties. Listen. Discover the moisture renewing secret as natural as the islands. Real rich cocoa butter and Pond's Cream and Cocoa Butter Lotion. Cocoa butter, the natural hand softening secret, blended with seven creamy moisturizers to leave even dry hands softer, younger looking. Discover the secret. Cocoa butter. In Pond's Cream and Cocoa Butter Lotion and Bath Beads. Uh, Mendenhall, she's uh, tidying up the desk. Thank you very much. Now, you don't get this on your pants, no. and be sure that you don't handle these books no, too much, because I think they have germs on them. I didn't get anything in your beverage, did I? No, you didn't seem to. What about well, wax? I just saw a little smudge on your desk right. while you were doing that little thing that. Here, before. Let me, let me get that with this. Wait a minute. There you go, Mrs. Mendenhall. Thank Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that'll never come off. <laughs> all right. We'll be talking with Mrs. Mendenhall from uh, all over the United States a little bit later in the show. She has household hints. Whether you want them or not is uh, her philosophy. That's interesting music. Frank Owens uh, was playing. It's like being in a beer bar down on Times Square somewhere. It's very nice. Um, it is, actually. It's quite nice. Uh, people who drive long distances uh, always ask the same two questions. Where should we eat and what should we see? Uh, no one is better qualified to answer those two questions than our next guests who have spent four years driving around the United States. Here are Jane and Michael Stern, ladies and gentlemen. Michael, how are you? These, uh, the two books that we're discussing today are of uh, particular interest to me. One is called Road Food, which we'll be talking about uh, initially, and the other one is Amazing America, having to do with the uh, peculiarities that we find across the United States. And uh, we have people in the audience, by the way, who started in uh, Central America, then they drove to Alaska, then uh, <laughs> across the North Pole and uh, over to Denmark or something. Uh, when I was a kid traveling around, it, the neat part for me was uh, always getting off the interstate and exploring and so forth. But when you're a little kid and your parents are driving, yeah, you don't know you any don't, better. You don't really get a chance to do any of that. But uh, in essence, that's what you folks have, have done. Tell me about road food. What are we dealing with there? Well, road food came out of a book we did about truck drivers. And basically, I guess you can tell by looking at me, I really like to eat. And so does he, even though he doesn't look it. And we wrote road food as a survival guide to how to cross the country and get a good meal. The basic idea of it is to do as you wanted to do as a kid, and that is get off the highway and find the uh, small cafes, tea rooms, roadside stands, places where they actually cook the food instead of uh, 
toss it in the microwave. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is now. You get a high school kid who heats up the stuff and uh, his girlfriend slaps it down in front of you. Um, <laughs> Were you successful? Are there many of those places still around? Well, we found about 450 of the best regional places to eat around the country, but uh, as you can imagine, we had to eat in quite a few more than 450 to find those. How long did it take you to research this? Well, I think we, we really stopped counting days and months, and we, we started counting cars, and uh -huh. I know we went through 12 cars. Oh, and, and you ended up eating in how many restaurants? Probably all together, for every one restaurant in road food, there are 450 in the book. I would say we probably ate in four or five mm -hmm. that were terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so we just put the good ones in the book, and the terrible ones we were uh, like human guinea pigs for. Yeah. What was the criteria? Well, the main thing was that it had to be near a highway, it had to be relatively inexpensive, and most of all, we were looking for places that served good regional food, uh, the kind of food that you don't get at home. Mm -hmm. And the meals had to be about five dollars or under, which isn't very easy nowadays. What about the, uh, the the one thing I always used to hear when we were crossing uh, wherever we were going? It was look for the trucks. Wherever the trucks are eating, uh, is a good place to eat. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, they don't. You know, truckers have um, a code word for for truck stops, and they call them choke and gags. Mm -hmm. And I think they do that for a reason. They eat at the truck stops because that's where they can park an 18-wheel rig, not because the food is good there. Now, when you decided you wanted to write this book, where do you begin? You know, uh, how do you, uh, who do you uh, go to see about good restaurants? Do you dig them out on your own? What do you do? We got lost a lot. I think that was that was our best approach. Um, Michael is a, is a very bad direction finder, and we just sort of get off a road and wander, and hit a restaurant. Um, we we really did start getting some um, tricks of how to find good road food after a while. One of the things we never did was to ask people, "Is there a good restaurant in town?" Mm -hmm. Because all too often they send you to the fancy French restaurant right. instead of the really good American one that might serve great catfish and hush puppies or something like that, you go to La Escargot and get uh, veal cordon bleu. And it's always spinning on top of the tallest building in town. <laughs> That's right. Anytime it's over four floors, they make it revolve. Right. <laughs> well, I, I was in one once. They had it like 40 Gary. miles an hour. The guy was just seeing it. Um, yeah, scenic tour of Gary. We have some proud citizens of Gary here oh, today. Oh, we were just there. Uh, now, there's 450 in here. Uh, highlight a couple for me. What, what do you remember most about the 450? Well, I guess one of our favorites is in Laurenburg, North Carolina, and it's called Mrs. Ford's Coffee Shop, and it's in a reconverted garage. You get a six-course southern dinner for 75 cents, and if Mrs. Ford doesn't like you, she chases you out with a cast-iron skillet. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she'd like you with your new haircut. Oh, yes. You pass, you pass rank. Uh, well, that would just be a vacation you couldn't forget, being chased out of a dump with a skillet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 75 cents. Yeah, um, I think her Sunday meal is a dollar, but it's still a good bargain. Yeah. Did, did you, were, were you ever concerned about being poisoned inadvertently in these places? Yeah, yes. we were concerned because we were poisoned in mm -hmm. a few of them. Um, of course, the ones, needless to say, that did not get, get in the book. Yeah, that's not a real favorable conclusion no. to place it. Uh, our traveling companion died. Maybe you want to pass this one up. Um, that was my, my fear, was that we would one of us would die. Not one of us, but he would die, and I would be stuck in Enigma, Georgia for the rest of Enigma, my life. Enigma, Georgia is the name right. of the place? Enigma, Georgia, that's wonderful. Tell me about the, uh, the great uh, barbecued rib place in Texas. Well, there, yeah, it's, I think it's in Welder, Texas. It's a place called Miller's Barbecue, and you'd never know there was a restaurant there because it's the back room of a grocery store. And it's really a great place not only for the ribs but the ambiance because what you, you eat in a room uh, that has boxes against the wall and old pop bottles, and uh, the utensils consist of one knife chained to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Rough crowd in there. So it's like dining right here at NBC. You know, it's the uh, same wonderful thing. Uh, we're going to continue talking with the Stearns. They have another book called Amazing America, and we'll discuss that and take a look at some photographs of what makes America amazing right after you take a look at this, folks. My furniture had two personalities. For this furniture, I needed polishes. For this furniture, cleaners. Now my furniture care is finally complete. Introducing New Complete. It cleans and polishes all kinds of furniture, from my good wood to my vinyl, chrome, plastic, and complete leaves no greasy film to streak or smear. Beautiful. At last, a polish, a cleaner. Furniture care is finally complete. See this ugly yellow stain? 
That's what comes from cigar or cigarette smoke. Just think what smoking a pack a day, every day, could do to your teeth. But look, here's Topol, the smoker's tooth polish that helps remove all kinds of superficial tobacco stains. Topol starts to work immediately to clean your teeth and to help remove these stains. Just use Topol week after week and watch your teeth get brighter and brighter. Topol, the smoker's tooth polish, now in three ounce regular or seven ounce fluoride. There you go, Max. <laughs> he loves cheese. And now he can enjoy the taste of real cheese with new Kennel Ration Tender Chunks beef and cheese flavor. Look, no ordinary dry dog food cuts like meat, chews like meat, and no ordinary dry dog food has these chewy cheese flavored chunks. Max really goes for it. New Kennel Ration Tender Chunks beef and cheese flavor. A great new tender chunks for dogs who love cheese. Right, Max? The last time I wore this dress was the time I discovered how good Van Rolon really is. We were away on vacation, and I was about to get dressed, when I realized I'd forgotten my antiperspirant spray. They were out of my brand, so my husband bought me Van Rolon. And you know what? I found it really worked better for me. I'm told Van Rolon keeps you drier than any leading spray, and I believe it. If you're using any leading spray, find out for yourself how effective Van Rolon is. Stearns, uh, the authors of two books. One is called Road Food, the other is called Amazing America, which we will get to in a second. When you were out researching these small, out-of-the-way little places looking for regional food, were you, did you ever feel threatened if they saw you making notes on your napkin or your tie or something? They weren't worried about us criticizing the food. They always were worried that we were the health inspector and we'd go in the bathroom. That was, I think, our main fear. I don't care how dirty it is as long as the food's good. Ooh. 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 Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I uh, was told one time that that's the first thing you should check is to go in there and take a look at the bathroom. Well, and if then you want to eat in the bathroom, maybe. But well, well, we, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got a plate with things crawling on it. We sent it, and we didn't put it Generally in. Generally, send it back. That would be another good a piece good of rule. advice. <laughs> um, um, this, uh, to me, is fascinating. Now, if somebody wanted to do this, could we just take your book on a trip and say, I wanted to go from New York to West Virginia. Are there places in there I could find? That's really the idea of the book, that all the places are near highways, mm -hmm. and they you don't have to put on a time jacket, you don't have to make a reservation in advance, so it really is for people who want to get places fast and are, can take maybe a two-mile detour off yeah. the highway. Are these places in danger? Are, are they gradually going to be overtaken by the fast food chains and so forth? It's inevitable. You know, almost, uh, I would say, at least half of the places in road food are run by very old people who are cooking with very old recipes that were passed on to them from their parents or grandparents or something like that. And very often what we've seen happen is that when, when they die, the restaurant stops. Yeah, how mm -hmm. many people are left that know how to make funeral pie and, funeral and pie? fanny yeah. daddies and, and things like what that? What is funeral pie? Just kind of a funeral joke pie. when the guy leaves you? <laughs> 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 uh, no, it's a raisin pie. It's Pennsylvania Dutch. And it used to be kept in the uh, cold basements of houses and brought up for funerals. Ooh. Do you know what graveyard <laughs> stew is? Graveyard stew, no. That's a Montana expression for milk toast. Mm. Because it's, it's eaten by uh, people who have one foot in the grave. Oh, I see. I see. Let me try Cherry one on. Show. Let me try one on you. You know what a Slurpee is? Great <laughs> <laughs> regional cuisine. <laughs> let me, um, we got the the other book is called Amazing America, and, and what are we going to be looking at here? I guess the principle of this is pretty much the same as road food, right? Yeah. It's, it's attractions that are off the beaten path that you're not going to find in an ordinary guidebook. Okay, and here we have a giant yellow coffee cup, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Unbelievable. There we go. Okay. That looks like uh, Frank Stober and his uh, large ball of twine. That's a ball of twine that weighs five tons and is eight feet tall. You know, five he, tons? He tripped over his shoelaces one day, and he swore he would never trip over another piece of twine, and that's what started this. 25 us. years doing that. There's a guy with plenty to do, huh? <laughs> well, you know, it's Cocker City, Kansas. He's kind of a happy-looking guy, too. A five-ton ball of string. Good for you, Frank. Congratulations. Now, what do we have here? That is one of ten Cadillacs at Cadillac Ranch. They're buried by the side of the road outside of Amarillo, Texas. Mm -hmm. Boy, Put there by an eccentric millionaire who wanted a bumper crop of Cadillacs. Cute. <laughs> right, cute. Kind of an eyesore, I would guess, isn't it? Kind of a... Well, it's interesting. People who drive by there have very odd reactions. The, the Cadillacs are covered with graffiti and filled with bullet holes. I think they make people angry. Oh, look at that. This is now, what do we have favorite. here? This is um, a frog lifting weight at uh, Croker College. It's a university for frogs mm -hmm. in California. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, physical education class. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think this country's in fine shape. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. And this. This is our car that we went to cross country. <laughs> um, you know how they like to customize cars in yeah. California. Well, that's an that's the most customized car that we found. It's in a place called the Unknown Museum. <laughs> and also where would California? It is in what, yeah. what part of California? It's in Marin County, as a matter of fact. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, does one part of the country lend itself to more oddities than another? We found that Kansas for some strange reason, maybe because it's so landlocked, had some of the weirdest things. It does have the largest ball of twine. Mm -hmm. It has the world's largest concrete American flag as well. Mm. So. It's amazing. Uh, amazing America is the name of the book. Road food is the other one. These are the Stearns. We have to pause for station identification. <laughs> On Lobo, the senator's up for re-election until he's dead. Dead? He's a stiff competitor and still running. It's the biggest cover-up since Watergate. Then, a bright new comedy. They're alone at last. What's the first thing we're going to do when we get to Europe? Lose our traveler's checks. <laughs> alone at last, right after Lobo Tuesday. It's beach time. Come to Elaine Power's free beach party this Thursday, June 26. It's not too late to get in swimsuit shape. There'll be a whole free day to meet our professionally trained instructors, try our effective exercise equipment. Enjoy! It's summer. And at Elaine Power's figure salons, you get unlimited salon visits and a low, low price. Join this week and save 25%. Just $2.95 a week for the complete four-month program. Call now for party day reservations. When prime ribs are roasted just right, you can practically taste them with your eyes. And with garden vegetables, simmered till they just turn tender, you can almost see how good they're going to taste. It's the same with home pride butter top bread. It looks and tastes like real bread should. Because we split the top, add butter, and let it bake right in. Home pride butter top, white and wheat. You can practically taste it with your eyes. Mr. Merritt, my Henry needs a new flea collar. Which do you recommend? Let me tell you about flea and tick collars, ma'am. Henry should see this. Some kill fleas and ticks like a powder, others like a spray. Only one works both ways. Sentry 5 from Sargent's works like a powder and a spray. Which would you like, Henry? <laughs> Henry says he wants this one. For your dog or cat, get the only collar that works like a powder and a spray. The Sargent Sentry 5 collar. Odd Couple, today at 5 on 13 Strong. Hey, good morning and welcome to the show. My name is David Letterman. If you're just joining us, uh, we had an incredible half hour. Uh, the mayor of New York City, Ed Koch, was here nude. <laughs> we don't know why. He was just here nude. You tell me. Uh, coming up in this half hour, we have my good friend Bob Sarlat. Esther Satterfield will be singing. And Hester Mundus will be here to talk about raising a, a chimp in the city of New York. I have two dogs in the city of New York. And not only do they hate being here, everyone within several miles of us hates them being here. So we'll talk to... <laughs> By the way, we have uh, random information about today's audience. This is uh, probably the only uh, studio audience in the history of television that will be announcing the average height and weight of the audience. And uh, you folks today, not too bad. A little short. Uh, but certainly not heavy by any consideration. <laughs> the average height is five and a half feet. Is that correct? Oh, I'm sorry, five two. Five two? What are the kindergarten kitties, huh? Uh, the average weight is 121. That is a little porky, though, isn't it, for five two? So uh, we will be monitoring the. Uh, here's our audience height and width. <laughs> <laughs> Some valuable piece of technical equipment down there. So we can take this one off. So you folks were right in there around 5'2". <laughs> there you go. Very proud of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see how you stack up against the rest of the audiences this week. So if you're jotting this down at home, once again, it's 5'2", 121 is the audience. Um, a lot of you are going, huh? <laughs> My next guest is a regular performer here on the show, and he comes to us from San Francisco. Uh, we have, as a matter of fact, the lady taking our notes is from San Francisco. Uh, among other things, he's a fine stand-up comedian. Please welcome Bob Sarlat. <laughs> You were out a minute ago, but earlier, a lady from Denmark won a brand new car. A brand new car! 
<laughs> Fantastic. How are things? Things are things are well. I was watching uh, the uh, the people that were just on here talking about Amazing America. Amazing America. Yes. Have you ever have you ever checked out a thing? Uh, maybe the audience has too. It's something called the Wax Museum. You ever been to the Wax Museum? Uh, I actually have. One one year when I was a child, uh, I went to a Wax Museum. Uh, my, I think a better question is how many have ever been to a wax museum twice? <laughs> so, they advertise it kind of strange. They advertise it as if you're going to see actual movement. You mm -hmm. know, they'll say, come to the wax museum and relive all those great moments of John Wayne's movie career. Stagecoach. <laughs> Not all that much excitement going on. We're talking about food. That was interesting. Food's one of my favorite subjects. Uh, the, uh, I used to do a lot of traveling. I used to be in a band. But we've talked about that mm -hmm. before. I used to travel, eat in some of the worst places. A lot of places like Denny's has signs outside that say, no shoes, no shirts, no service. You know, you love to see those. A lot of times I felt like walking in with just a t-shirt and thongs and that's it, you know? Hey, you got a table for me? <laughs> what I have brought along today, uh, I know a lot of people, you did your bio yesterday morning. I did my uh, biography. And yeah. a lot of people, a lot of express mail, a lot of cards, letters saying, who is that guy I like to call Bob Sarlat? And how can we find out more about him? <laughs> well, you folks at home, your prayers are answered, aren't they? <laughs> because, well, in, in lieu of, of your presentation, I just think I'd like to let the slides and the music tell my story the best. The story of Bob Sarlat. Carlos, can we All roll right, it? Fine. I was born and raised down in Alabama. <laughs> Back up in the woods. I was so ragged. Oh, that's so, so. Oh, Mama that's used to tease me about it. I think it. We'll some kind of mix up here. Uh, oh, that's I against. believe, I think that's the Frank Owens bio. It is the Frank Owens yeah. bio. We, uh, no, there's a mistake some there. Some kind of a Frank. mistake here. I, uh, <laughs> gee, wrong cards, the whole uh, thing. Give us boy is my face red, huh? Boy, How about yours, a, Frank? What a no, mix up. Nasty joke. I'm right. sorry. It'll happen. I brought along what I like to call those cute little childhood pictures, okay, David. Okay, let's get to them. Bob. All righty. First of all, here's the first shot here. If we can get a close-up here. Yeah, on that big guy's knee, huh? Forward. There Whoa. you go. Aww. Oh, Aww. yeah. Aww. Go ahead, folks. Aww. Aww. Look at that, huh? I, can we get another shot of that? I believe, that, yeah, that, that was the year I asked Santa for a neck, uh -huh. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of a real in-shape guy, huh? Now, this next shot, David, I'd like to kind of... Uh, the following year, I believe Santa wised up. I'm on the other knee, as you can see. <laughs> and I'm a little mad because Santa, however, you know, he has not given me my neck, but I'm thanking him very much for the nice toupee instead. <laughs> and if you look real closer, I believe you can see that little nose numbers on the bottom. I was one of the only kids that needed a license plate on the bottom of my feet. Kind of a big kid. Uh, I didn't see the license plate license, there. Well, that's okay. We'll just move along to photo number three, folks. This is what I would affectionately called the Pancho Villa years. Uh, boy, a pretty lifelike backdrop. <laughs> I was raised in San Francisco. You can kind of see why well, that looks... You can just see those those cows jumping over that fence, huh? Pretty lifelike. It was shortly thereafter that they formed the ASPCA, I believe, wasn't it? I believe. Now, the final shot here, David, uh, get a good look at this. Uh, this is taken... Uh, <laughs> This, uh, I don't know if you knew this, I was the youngest graduate in the history of pro bartender school. I don't know. <laughs> and a, a nice-looking tie, too, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We were really poor as kids. Uh, my dad actually got this tie from an old Jerry Mahoney doll, as you can kind of see. Good-looking kid, huh? But you could obviously afford plenty of Vitalis, as the <laughs> picture indicates there. Uh, that's the amazing, incredible Bob Sarlat story, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like a leather-bound volume of that, <laughs> save your money. Uh, this program will continue with much more for you right after this. <laughs> We have no pest. Mosquitoes? No, darling. We have no pest. <laughs> if you use a spray, get the famous no pest strip, too. With both, you'll kill more bugs because the strip kills round the clock, 24 hours a day. The no pest strip. It's 24-hour protection. <laughs> Flies? Mosquitoes? <laughs> Ridiculous. See this ugly yellow stain? That's what comes from cigar or cigarette smoke. Just think what smoking a pack a day, every day, could do to your teeth. But look, here's Topol, the smoker's tooth polish that helps remove all kinds of superficial tobacco stains. Topol starts to work immediately to clean your teeth and to help remove these stains. Just use Topol week after week and watch your teeth get brighter and brighter. Topol, the smoker's tooth polish, now in 3-ounce regular or 7-ounce fluoride.
Oh, these freckles. Is there anything that'll help fade them? For Solana, the medicated fade cream. Lately, I've had these awful-looking brown patches. What can I do about them? Try Porcelana, the fade cream. They call these age spots. I call them ugly, but what's a woman to do? Rub in Porcelana helps fade age spots, sun freckles, and those dark patches associated with childbearing years. Porcelana helps lighten brown patches to more closely match your natural skin tone. Surprise! New gadgets to deodorize our refrigerator. Harry, for about the price of that package, we can buy two boxes of Arm & Hammer baking soda. Two boxes? One to deodorize the freezer so the ice cubes and ice cream won't taste funny. And one for our strongest refrigerator odors. Limburger cheese sauerkraut. Smells fresh and sweet in here. Arm & Hammer eliminates sour odors. Mmm. Louise, I've been a fool. That's, That's true, true, Harry. Nothing says fresh and clean like Arm & Hammer and saves money. On today, actor Sidney Poitier. If we are 40 million Americans, we certainly ought to have more than one movie star. Tomorrow morning on today. Frank Owens in the David Letterman Show Symphony Orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have uh, Esther Satterfield uh, with us, and Hester Mundus will be out in a moment to talk about raising a chimp. Uh, in a New York City apartment. But before we get to all of that, we have these uh, audience questionnaires from which we gain valuable data. And uh, what you don't understand is once you leave here, we follow you. <laughs> um, I was looking over some of this stuff. We have several categories. Vacation plans here. I would guess this would be a young gentleman. He hopes to go to California to meet Melissa Gilbert of Little House on the Prairie and to take her on a date. <laughs> Fat chance, pal. No. <laughs> who, who is... Uh, well, we'll get to that guy later. Uh, describe your personality. Somewhat irregular, but friendly. Classy. Uh-huh. Why are you here? You tell me. <laughs> uh, vacation plans. This guy says, two more dogs in New York than a straight shot home. <laughs> those, those apparently also his dating plans. Um... um <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, the important thing to keep in mind is the average height of the audience, 5'2", the average weight, 121. Um, Esther Satterfield projects grace, control, and a most pleasing sound, whether it be in a nightclub, Carnegie Hall, or a television studio, and the latter is where she is today. Ladies and gentlemen, a terrifically talented singer, here's Esther Satterfield. <laughs>
If you're worried about stains on your dentures, don't have the cherry pie unless you have the cream. Dentu cream. And don't have the coffee unless you have the cream. Dentu cream. Dentu cream denture toothpaste has a powerful anti-stain formula that helps brush away tough stains, leaving your dentures feeling fresh and clean. So don't have the berries unless you have the cream. Anti-stain formula, Dentu cream. Now with a new improved flavor. I want a laxative that works when I want it to. Take Senecot, pure natural vegetable laxative. Not a thick liquid bulk. Senecot is gentle, easy to take. And it works when many other laxatives fail. It's hospital tested, doctor recommended. So reliable you can practically set your clock by Senecot. Usually clears constipation in 8 to 10 hours. I can practically set my clock by Senecot. Senecot, pure natural vegetable. Usually clears constipation in 8 to 10 hours. Lisa, look. Your new brother's waving at you. He wants you to help me give him his bath. You can bring me the Q-tip swabs, okay? Okay. He likes Q-tips because they're so soft. See? <laughs> Q-tips, the original soft swab. Just look at that soft cushion of cotton. Mommy, am I still your baby? Oh, Lisa, you're my baby girl. <laughs> Q-tip swabs, the softest thing in the world next to your baby. Remember your bouffant hairdo and all that icky hairspray? Well, hairstyles changed a lot, but hairsprays didn't until today. Today, there's the soft hairspray called Rave. Look, spray Rave on one side, the old kind on the other. The old kind dries so stiff, the comb can barely get through. But you can comb through Rave without combing out the hold. Rave Soft Hairspray, the flexible hold you can comb through, now in unscented, too. Welcome back to the show. Just, uh, I mentioned this yesterday. There is no need for anybody to ever watch any other program again while this one's on because, of course, as you know, we have our own television here. And, and right there, that's us. You can see us right there. And from time to time, I'll just keep you posted. Now, for example, Channel 2 is, is an Alice rerun. See, there's Flo and there's Alice. And uh, they found something in Mel's stew, apparently. And then the fun begins. Let's see what else we have here. We have Sesame Street. Bob, this might not be a bad idea for you. That's on Channel 13. There I am. Boy, is that stupid looking. You. And then the Channel 7 here in New York is... Uh, well, we have news update. Jane Wallace is giving us all the news here in New York. So you can see there's another feature why you need never worry about what you're missing when you're watching this show. Um, some people have cats, some people have dogs, and our next guest has raised a chimpanzee in her New York City apartment. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Hester Mundus, a writer for McCall's Working Mother magazine. Hello, Hester. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming back here. Have a seat there, Hester. I'm going to uh, put the television set away. Um, now, uh, this is your book. He's No, he's not a monkey. He's an ape, and he's my son, uh, is the title of the book that she has written. How did this come to pass, that you would uh, have a chimpanzee in an apartment in New York City? Oh, how did it come to pass? We were crazy. I mean, you have to be a little insane. You and... My husband. Mm -hmm. And we had a son, or well, we still have him. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't exchange. There was no exchange. Um, it was a rainy Saturday afternoon. We were stuck in the apartment with a kid. And we found out there was this little store that let you pet exotic animals. And we went down there, and we fell in love. Mm -hmm. Love at first banana. <laughs> now, this, uh, I guess we'll take a look at, is this the, is this the guy here? Uh, that's the guy. This is, what is his name? His name is Boris, uh -huh. and his, oh, he's beautiful. Yeah, it looks he's like cute. a little toy. Now, uh, at that. what age was this? He was six months when that was taken. Yeah, and, six months. and this is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee, yes. How big do those get? Well, uh, let's just say, you know when, I'm sure it was Arnold Schwarzenegger's mother must have held him as a little baby. Mm -hmm. That's how big they get. They get to be about five feet one inch tall, 140 pounds, strength of six men. They get enormous. All those little chimps that you see doing all those cute little things, mm -hmm. uh, those are only about two, three-year-old chimps. They get enormous. Mm -hmm. They look like gorillas. Most people don't know the difference. Now, did, did anybody tell you this when you went to the pet shop? Not at the pet shop. No, no. We found this out later, the hard way. In fact, everyone, 
I, after we got the chimp home, I began reading, which is not the way you do it. You should read before. And every book I read about it said, don't do this. Mm -hmm. I called veterinarians. They said, have it's 17 children yeah, He'll first. be the size of a Buick. Leave him at the shop. Yes, yeah. but we didn't believe that. Um, now, uh, generally, I have heard, especially in New York City, it's not a real, it's not conducive to have an animal that is accustomed to being out bouncing around. And I have heard advice from people who say, don't mess with an exotic pet. You're just doing That's the true. pet a disservice and yourself a disservice. No, that is definitely true. Um, exotic animals, what's yes, yes in the jungle is no, no in your apartment. Mm -hmm. Because, well, we had beautiful draperies at one point. I was an elegant hostess. We ended up having a cage nine feet high, five feet wide, four feet deep in our dining room. Do you know what my dinner parties were like? Was you want either hoo hoo? I mean, we had to put him inside when people were there because he'd take stuff off the plate. Um, what he did. He loved it. This may be a delicate question, but what about the smell? I mean, a dinner party at your place must have been. I beg your pardon. Boris was very clean and he wore diapers. He wore the disposable. Very clean, washed him up every single day. Now, chimps don't like water. Uh -huh. Well, and the thing is, but Boris didn't know this because he wasn't raised in the jungle. And what happened in our apartment was, it was like, <coughs> he made this great water discovery. Chimps can turn on the faucets, they can flush the toilet, and Boris did all of this. He did it so much that for a while, the rugs in the bathroom were squishing. He went crazy. You couldn't stop him. I mean, they dart all over the place. And he had a wonderful time with his water discovery. Okay, let's go back to the, to the beginning. You bring the guy home, and yeah. um, at what point did you realize you were in over your head? <laughs> well, I think, well, it started when we started telling people about it. If you tell people you're having a baby, they say, oh, congratulations. Right. Yeah. You tell them you're getting a chimp, they tell you dirty monkey jokes. I mean, things bags over there. They make dirty, disgusting monkey Give jokes. Give me an example of a dirty monkey joke. This is, this oh, is a... Oh, well, yeah. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> well, no, they do. Well, they also say they spit, they bite. And do they? Do they spit no, and they, they bite? They don't spit, they don't bite, unless, you know, there's a reason to spit and bite. Children spit and bite, too. Mm -hmm. And they tell you they're incredible exhibitionists. But maybe in the zoos, the chimps don't have anything else to play with. We gave them toys. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I could have been to some of those dinner parties, Hester. Gosh, the more you describe, the better they sound. Um, now, but it was uh, clean. You, okay, we, and now I want to I find out how your family reacted to all of that, and we'll take a break and continue talking with Hester Mundus, author of No, He's Not a Monkey, He's an Ape, and He's My Son. Joe, it'll take you hours to clean my whole carpet. It'll take you minutes, because what's making your whole carpet look dirty is just this greasy, oily, heavy traffic area dirt. Try Plush. It's got special grease and oil dissolvers activated by your sponge mop to lift out dirt locked in by grease and oil. I cleaned only the heavy traffic area, and my whole carpet looks clean. Plush gets heavy traffic area so clean, your whole carpet looks clean. Tough enough for stains, too. Yahoo! A real Western barbecue! Hi, gang! Join the party! We brought my extra hot chili. <gasps> the wrap's not so hot, honey. It's coming off. Well, sometimes plastic wraps clean, sometimes they don't. You can always rely on Reynolds wrap. It molds to every kind of bowl. And this little trick closes it tightly so food is protected. And I line the grill and cook in Reynolds wrap, too. How's that, cowboy? Well done, partner. Reynolds wrap. <laughs> the best wrap around. We want a snack! Cracker Jack, it's America's great fun family snack. Cracker Jack is delicious caramel-coated popcorn and peanuts and a secret toy surprise. Cracker Jack, it's America's great fun family snack. Now your kids can be the winner of the world's biggest Cracker Jack box. Each special Cracker Jack box has a toy surprise by Mattel worth $25 or more, like Mork and Mindy dolls or a Drive Command radio control car. Details at your participating store. So what are you waiting for? My family. Every Saturday morning, my men go fishing. And every Saturday night, dinner's the catch of the day. And or Ida French fries. Week after week, I never know what they'll catch. But I do know that week in, week out, I can always count on or Ida French fries tasting good. America's favorite fries. <laughs> or Ida French fries. They'll never take you by surprise. When it says or Ida, it's always all right. Dr. 
welcome back. We're talking with Hester Mundus, uh, who previously raised a chimp, Boris, in her home. Um, and your husband, how did he react to all of this? Did it affect your relationship with him? Well, it, I think it brought us closer together. We didn't have, well, we didn't have time for any of those, you know, darling, I need my space and I need, we needed our apartment space. Mm -hmm. We were forced to come together. It did affect, you know, a little bit our romance because chimps cling to their mothers and Boris thought I was his mother. Mm -hmm. And since he was only 24 inches high, he was always clinging to my leg. And it's very hard to be romantic mm -hmm. if you're walking like the elephant man all the time. Yeah. Hello, darling. You know, yeah. and the chimp was always on my but lap. But you're warm in the winter. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> what, what about, um, now, at this time, did you have a child? Or? Yes. Our son was eight years old, and as siblings, they got along very, very well. Uh, my son would take Boris around in a little grocery cart and pull him around, mm -hmm. and Boris, in turn, would groom my son. And he could use it. Oh, at that time. <laughs> the chimps would stand on his lap and, like, pick little things out of his hair. Well, there was nothing in his hair, but the chimp thought there was. No, were. no, no. You said there were little things in the kid's hair. Well, no, no, they... Hester, what were the little things in the kid's hair? <laughs> in the jungle, it's called scurf. It's dried... Scurf? Scurf. And what it is is the, they pick the oil, um, little dead cells off other chimps and eat it. Fortunately, Boris didn't eat anything he found in my son's hair. He yes, was very sir. smart chimp. Now would be a good time to have another batch of waffles if you're watching at home. <laughs> vitamin D that way. That's basically Now, okay, you, you eventually had to get, get rid of Boris. Yes, I became... Why did you have to uh, take him where you took him? Well, well did, I didn't take him. We sent him. I became pregnant, and it was, you can't have an infant and a chimpanzee. Why is that? The chimpanzee would be a little rough as a sibling for an infant. Is there actual jealousy? Yes. In... Oh, extreme jealousy. I once brought a little doll home. Boris took the doll, and he played with it for a while, but when I picked the doll up, he took the doll and went... <laughs> and I could see my new baby going, <laughs> didn't want to do that. No yeah, way. No. So we wrote all over the world. I mean, it's not giving up a pet. This was my son. You had spent how much time with him at that point? Two and a half years. How big is Boris now, and where is he? Boris now, oh, there he is with my son. Now, that's brotherly yeah. love. Um, he is now living in the chest. Ooh, what are those things in your kid's hair? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> oh, that, wait, no, no, that's. Ah, that's, that's, we're no, going that's backwards, not, aren't we? Yes, yeah. you're going backwards. But Boris is now living in the Chester Zoo in England. Yeah. But now that is my grandson. Now, they had the disturbing news for you about Boris, didn't they? Yes. That, by the way, is Boris today. The disturbing news was before I had my grandson, they wrote me quickly from England saying he shows no signs of wanting to mate, implying that he was gay. Mm -hmm. And I was... No, this is true. Mm -hmm. I wrote back that they had ugly chimps. I think Boris is very handsome now. Did he uh, do any decorating at your place, uh, Hester? He, we decorated... We had, we, had, we had shorter draperies. <laughs> and because we didn't want him to catch any colds, we, we lined our windows with caulking, which sort of looked like chewing gum. Now, you mentioned... Uh, so Boris finally did have an offspring, right? Yes, yeah. thank God. Yeah. He's a, he's a handsome-looking uh, fella for, a, for an ape there. Now, will yes. he get any, get any bigger than that? He is now the strongest chimp at the Chester Zoo. I say that once. Have you seen him lately? I saw him last February, and he remembered me. I didn't think he would remember me. I don't think he remembered me as his mother. I just wasn't prepared for that, but they said they were sure he would remember me. I went to the zoo. They wouldn't let me go in the cage because they were afraid he would mm -hmm. really remember me. And, but I brought him his favorite foods, which were raisins and marshmallows, and I cried. I mean, we just cried. It was every. It was Lassie come home. It was you know the Red yeah. Pony Ashley coming back. Now, had you not Gary. had you not been in an apartment, uh, say you had a ranch somewhere with a lot of acreage, could you have kept Boris, or would it have been to his detriment? We we probably would have, but it would have been to his detriment. What he has at Chester now is he has chimps his own age to play with. Women. <laughs> I mean, we could not have supplied him with chimp women. Uh, I would not, we could have gone with any women. I mean, I wouldn't, but <laughs> get in the morning show. Um, but he, he now has, plus the zookeepers over there play with him, so he has the companionship of both humans and apes, the best of both possible worlds, because he could not have gone back shape. to the jungle. This is Hester Mundus. Uh, she raised an ape in her apartment. If you're leaving us now, we hope you'll be with us again tomorrow. we got to take a pause for a station break. We'll continue. <laughs> Got a lot to smile about. In a special way, we're gonna light your nights and fill your days. Don't you know we're proud to say we're NBC, proud as a big 
look at this bottle. The first time you see it in your supermarket, you'll know it's something new. And wait till you try it. Inside is the first real laundry detergent news in years. It comes in a bottle, but it's not a liquid. It's not an ordinary powder. It's a highly concentrated granular detergent called Fresh Start. It's specially designed to work on all four common laundry soils, food, grease, body stains, and just plain dirt. Here's why Fresh Start works so well. We've combined the best dirt and stain-fighting ingredients of powders with the best grease-fighting ingredient of liquid detergents into granules so concentrated just a quarter cup does a whole wash load. And this bottle gives you more wash loads than a giant size box of powder. If you want something specially designed to work on all four common laundry soils, get new Fresh Start. It combines the best of powders and the best of liquid detergents in one. Many people think television is the most important force in today's society. Read all about it. Every week in TV Guide magazine. 21st Century Health Spas are having a special summer shape-up program. Enroll now. 13 visits, only $6.99. That's right, only $6.99. Call or stop by your nearest 21st Century Health Spa today. If your wife has a drinking problem, you can see what it's doing to her. But can you see what it's doing to you? Contact Al-Anon. MASH today at 5.30 on 13 Strong. Hello there, and welcome to the David Letterman Show. I'm David Letterman, and uh, we're live coming to you from New York City. Uh, that's in the state of New York, better known as the Empire State. The city is known as the Big Apple. And I could go on and on like this for hours, but no point in boring everyone, silly. So let's continue, shall we now? Not a bad idea, eh? My next guest is a good friend of mine. Uh, with whom I have worked several times. Uh, he is a, a regular uh, visitor on this program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome humorist and filmmaker Will Schreiner. How do you do, Will? Nice to see you. Why don't you have a seat right over here, Will? Nice to have you here, Will, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you from time to time. Um, I know you... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's nice to be here, Dave. I, uh, I feel like I'm in a pretty good mood because I was... Um, standing around the back of the studio before the show started, mm -hmm. and I signed about 30 autographs already. <laughs> Terrific, yeah. Uh, they're all back there if anybody wants one of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know you, uh, you brought one of your films with you today. Uh, can I ask you uh, how you first got into making film? I mean, you say a young guy. How did this begin? When I guess, well, when I was a kid growing up, my, uh, my parents used to make a lot of home movies when we were young. And it always bothered my brother and I because um, they never used us in any of them. Never used you in the films? Yeah, yeah, they said we weren't right for the parts. <laughs> oh. But my daddy uh, gave me a movie camera as kind of a going away present. Yeah. And uh, it really took me by surprise because uh, at that time I had no idea I was going anywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we go to the film now? You want to well, take a look at what we got? Or you have, uh... Yeah, I guess the best thing to, to explain, this is what this is about. It's uh, I try to stay abreast of the news of today. Well, there's so much going on now, yeah, sure, you got politically. The, yeah, you got the news update right here. Yeah. So uh, what I thought I'd do is sort of highlight this week in the news, things that have been going on okay, the past fine, week or well, so. So if we could uh, just, just watch roll the, the monitors, film. I guess. Yeah. Uh, I ran out and grabbed my camera, and I just made my plane in the nick of time. <laughs> I took one of these new no-frills flights. So, I was lucky, too, because I got a window seat. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dave, I'll never forget, it was a smooth approach into Washington, D.C. <laughs> We came in uh, right behind one of the new French Concorde jets. Yeah, they, uh, they, they don't have the bugs out of those things yet, I don't think. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do in Washington was arrange some interviews with top government officials, but most of them were tied up in business meetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some were in court. Sure. I finally dropped in on a cabinet meeting. And, you know, they were all just a bit surprised to have the press coverage. <laughs> Carter's top economic advisor was busy trimming the budget. Yeah. And Vice President Mondale tried to say hello. <laughs> Over at the Supreme Court, there had been a lot of controversy lately about certain methods of FBI wiretapping. <laughs> And at the Pentagon, as you know, the volunteer army's not working, so the draft is coming back. And the Navy is the very first to get back into active civilian recruiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Yeah, it was big talk at Democratic headquarters. It was big news when Senator Kennedy decided to temporarily step out of the running for president. Uh -huh. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Yeah, it's disappointed a lot of supporters. You know, the high point of my trip, though, was a state dinner at the White House. Uh, little Amy Carter greeted the guests. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy brought plenty of beer for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Lillian did a quick little dance. And it was a big hit with the whole Carter family. Yeah, and a happy bunch, huh? Carter tried a new image to help with public opinion. <laughs> Had some quick notes made on his speech. <laughs> Said hello to Ronald Reagan, of course. <laughs> And uh, came down down to the banquet. But after Washington, I went up to New York City. Right here in New York, yeah. And uh, I wanted to take a look at the economic picture. While I was here, the first place I went was down on Wall Street. And I saw where the dollar had reached another new low in trading. <laughs> and after that, I went over to Niagara Falls to the polluted Love Canal and spoke with some of the people about problems. And they said they hadn't noticed anything, but the fishing's been just great. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> So my next stop was out in Los Angeles. I flew out on one of those World Airways yeah. $19 uh, flights. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you get around a lot, don't you? Yeah. yeah. On the LA scene, people are hard hit by rising oh inflation. Oh my God, sure. Job layoffs have doubled a lot of workloads. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and high inflation has been tough on many homeowners. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, in other news, uh, the Air Quality District flew in one of their top smog advisors to take a look at the L.A. smog problems and to offer a few suggestions. <laughs> Ralph Nader was also in town test driving the new Pintos. <laughs> and the Diamond Lane went back into effect. Oh, sure, again. Yeah. You know, many people tried their hardest to avoid carpooling. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wind things up and uh, take a look at the weather. Yeah, oh, great. Right. Let's end with the weather. Much like it's been all week, you know, we'll have a lot of that late night and early morning fog in the coastal areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we've been having a lot of trouble with our satellite picture lately. I don't know what it is, but uh, as everyone can see, there's a chance of uh, rain tomorrow. There'll probably be uh, light scattered showers in the morning mm -hmm. and a little heavier rainfall in the afternoon. <laughs> gentle offshore breezes at the coast and the temperatures for tomorrow Dave will be in the low to mid 80s um, just slightly warmer in the inner city so. a little warmer yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> the air pollution index for tomorrow shows there to be a chance of a stage two smog alert yeah persons with respiratory problems are cautioned to stay indoors <laughs> and that's a look at the news uh, I feel now like I can better deal with what's what's going on in the world today. Will Schreiner, ladies and gentlemen, will be back with us from time to time to keep us posted on, uh, I guess, all sorts of things. All huh? the, everything, oh, Dave. Terrific. Will, glad to have you here. And we will continue with this program. Uh, Edwin Newman will be joining us with an NBC News update right after this. Problem. Won't these work? Scouring powders or bleaches can't do the whole job. But watch Vanish release its crystals in water to clean, disinfect, and deodorize. Vanish is best. Crystal Vanish. With chloride plus disinfecting crystals. For a cleaner bowl and a fresher bathroom. The good old summertime, sun, fun, swimming, and the summertime itch. Itching rashes, sunburn itch, chafing, insect bites. Lanocaine cream to the rescue. It's specially formulated for itching problems. Lanocaine's medically tested ingredient helps stop itching fast, and its antibacterial action permits natural healing. Take the itch out of your summer with Lanocaine medicated cream. Also, Lanocaine medicated spray. When Tender Vittle said fresh, my cat said mmm. But now a new improved Tender Vittle says fresh, my cat says mmm. Mm. That's because new improved Tender Vittles has even more good taste sealed fresh in every pouch, which means each extra tasty morsel stays moist and tender. So now more than ever, when Tender Vittles cat food says fresh, my cat says mmm. Mm. New improved Tender Vittles. Now there's even more good taste sealed fresh in every pouch. Mmm. Mm. There's something special about a woman's touch.
You do so much for so many. Yet some days you don't feel your best because of occasional irregularity. Then you take Correctol, the modern gentle laxative. Correctol special formula combines a mild laxative with a softening agent. Its gentle overnight action will help you feel like yourself again. Next time, try Correctol, the modern gentle laxative so many women are using today. On Lobo, the senator's up for re-election until... He's dead. Dead? He's a stiff competitor and still running. It's the biggest cover-up since Watergate. Then, a bright new comedy. They're alone at last. What's the first thing we're gonna do when we get to Europe? Lose our traveler's checks. <laughs> alone at last, right after Lobo, Tuesday. Welcome back to the show. You may wonder why everybody in the studio audience is applauding, and I'll tell you why. We just raffled off the mobile home. Congratulations, ma'am. Enjoy yourself. Yes, a uh, uh, $16,000 value. Uh, it's time once again for a regular feature of uh, the David Letterman Show, and I, uh, forgive me for mentioning the name of the show. I'll just call it Beat the Clock, all right? Um, anyway, here once again from NBC News is Edwin Newman with an NBC News update. Ed? Thank you, David. The cost of living went up again in May by nine-tenths of one percent. That's also how much it went up in April. On a yearly basis, that would put inflation between 10 and 11 percent, a bit less than in recent months. Gasoline was down somewhat, so was food. Natural gas and electricity charges were up, so were wearing apparel and rent, but they were going up less steeply. For the working person, the news in May was that hourly earnings fell, so did the number of hours worked in a week. This pushed down spendable earnings. That's the money left after taxes. Portland, Oregon has canceled all air pollution alerts for the first time since Mount St. Helens erupted on the 12th of June. Tomorrow, the United States Senate is expected to approve $952 million for cleaning up the Mount St. Helens damage. President Carter is to be guest of honor tonight at a state dinner in Belgrade, capital of Yugoslavia, where he and his wife and daughter arrived this morning. They were greeted by enthusiastic crowds waving American and Yugoslav flags as they were driven through the city in a 50-car motorcade. Their first stop was the tomb of President Tito. Mr. Carter placed a large bouquet of red roses on a, on a white marble crypt, which he described as a very beautiful memorial to a great man. Tomorrow, the Carter family flies to Madrid. France has set off another nuclear explosion in the South Pacific, the second in a week. The test was in connection with developing a warhead to be launched from a submarine. In Toronto, a fire and explosion today destroyed the headquarters of the Communist Party of Canada. The head of the Communist Party said it was the work of an arsonist. No injuries. That's it. Thank you. I have a couple of questions for you. First of all, have you ever heard the word scurf? No. S-C-U-R-F, no. I believe. Do you I think that's, it may be something that's in somebody's head. Oh, you mean you think that's a phony word? No, no, no. In his hair. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's what she yes. said. This woman, yeah. apparently, her child, uh, w w I don't know, she had a monkey and a child, and the, the, the monkey would unscurf the kid, as she described it. A curious phenomenon, yeah. Uh, also, have you, you must wear, you wear a headscarf to take care of the head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The scarf would cover the skirt. Um, <laughs> Did, uh, did you ever, you must have traveled with a president at one yes, time or another. Yes. Is, it, is it grueling? Yes, it is. And the competition is fierce to try to get an angle that some other, that the other reporters don't have. Uh -huh. uh, you get a cable from home occasionally saying we want an exclusive angle. It's not easy to find when there are a hundred or so or two hundred reporters all chasing the same story. Who was the most recent president that you spent time with? Uh, well, uh, John Kennedy, um, Lyndon Johnson. Richard Nixon. Yeah. Do you ever get to know them personally? Do they ever uh, break the facade? Not, not then, David. Not on one of those trips. Mm -hmm. There's no time. It's possible to get to know them uh, when you don't expect to. Yeah. Uh, they're uh, possibly before they become president is the be is the best way to do it. Once they become president. It, it's almost impossible. Yeah. I, it was interesting to me that when uh, President Carter first was in office, he was carrying his own bags and so on and so yeah. forth to the objection of uh, the, the people in the country. They sort of would rather he elevated himself as being a regular guy, right? I think so. Also, there is a competition among people on presidential staffs to do that kind of thing. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> they want to uh, 
They want to be there. They want to, to some extent, ingratiate themselves. Or they may think it's quite improper for a president yeah. to be carting his suits around. Uh, of course, it's possible, I suppose, to carry one of those suit containers with no suit in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Edwin Newman, good luck with your scurf, Ed. We'll uh, see you tomorrow. In Thanks, fact, Simon. everyone here at NBC is broken out with scurf, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll continue with this television show in two minutes. Thanks, Ed. to be 97% caffeine-free. Flavor that helped to make Nescafe a world-class name in coffee. For robust coffee without caffeine, taste Nescafe decaffeinated. Nescafe decaffeinated and regular. Robust flavor that won the world. Oh, these freckles. Is there anything that'll help fade them? For Solana, the medicated fade cream. Lately, I've had these awful-looking brown patches. What can I do about them? Try Porcelana, the fade cream. They call these age spots. I call them ugly, but what's a woman to do? Rub in Porcelana helps fade age spots, sun freckles, and those dark patches associated with childbearing years. Porcelana helps lighten brown patches to more closely match your natural skin tone. Harold, time for your brand. Brand? Harold just left. He uh, doesn't like brand cereals. Dad doesn't know what he's missing with crackling brand. Oats, brown sugar, coconut. Not just brand. Try it. Harold's home. Get the milk. Kellogg's Cracklin' Brand. High fiber, great nut-like taste. You like brand, you like it. I like it. If you like brand, you'll love it. We love it. Kellogg's Cracklin' Brand. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in the first half hour of this television program, we selected Carol Ringwin. How do, uh, am I even close, Carol? I'm, I'm close. Carol Ringwin from San Francisco. And if you have missed portions of this show, uh, although I'm not sure why anyone would want to, <laughs> uh, she is taking notes for you, and we'll be uh, consulting with her later. Uh, yesterday, you all met our regular representative of the American Housewife. She's back with us again today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Marv Mendenhall. <laughs> Go ahead and make yourself at home. <laughs> you may be the happiest woman I know. Well, you know, I say happy is as happy does. That's what wise men say. Wise men, yeah. Wise men usually were happy guys, weren't they? Yes, yeah. they're riding around on camels finding baby Jesus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, I would like to introduce well, myself. Well, sure, go right ahead. These folks, they haven't met me before. No, that's right. And my name is Mrs. Marv Mindenhall. Mm -hmm. And uh, they may not know me, but I feel that I know just about everybody in the country because I've lived outside of almost every major American city. That's right. Uh -huh. When Marv Sr. worked for AAA, we lived just outside Dayton in Trotwood. Uh -huh. And then he was transferred to St. Louis, and we lived just outside in Creve Kerr. Uh -huh. And then we moved to Kamehameha Heights, which is just outside of Honolulu. Uh -huh. yeah. um, uh, do you have something to, to share with us today, Mrs. Mendenhall? Oh, yes, of course, Dave. Okay. Now, I'm going to show our viewers how they can make their very own at-home David Letterman show notebook. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yes, because I think that active participation in our show will help to heighten the viewing enjoyment. Boy, me too. Yeah, so first of all, we need some brightly colored construction paper mm -hmm. that has uh, holes punched along along one side so you can find it with a, a yarn and then you can uh, add pages as time goes sure, on. Yeah. Now what I've chosen is orange and green pages. Beautiful. Yes, with a light blue yarn so that when I display this on the coffee table <laughs> in the den, it will match my Barca lounger as well as the flex in the big area. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah so it's kind of, oh it I'm is. saying, 
of jet dark. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and I'd like our viewers to let their imagination just fly. Yeah, that's a very good advice, and it is highly decorative, isn't it? Yes, yes. this year is a nylon poof. We'll be doing a special mm -hmm. series on nylon yeah, later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, what would we find uh, in there, Mrs. Mendenhall? Oh, we'd find all sorts of things, but, you know, one lady writes in. Mm -hmm. she, she was wondering, she says, I do most of my viewing in the kitchen. How do I get food stains off construction paper? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, we've been on the air maybe one and a half days. How is it that you're now getting mail? I... Oh, <laughs> you caught me out, Dave. <laughs> I wrote this letter myself. <laughs> I just thought it would be cute to say, one lady writes in, uh, you it, know? It was, it was cute, yeah. But the reason I did it is to show that uh, contact paper makes a very nice cover, and you can simply sponge it off. Uh -huh. I suppose anybody interested in this would need a good sponging from time to time. Oh, yes. Now, yeah. what you do is you write your name inside with your address. Now, I wrote Mrs. Mar Mendenhall, just outside New York. Now, you uh -huh. put your own name in, of course. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, you keep interesting information. Yes, yeah. we garner information as time goes on. You see here, I wrote June 24th, Bob had no nap. That's right, Bob yes, saw it. Uh -huh. okay, and huh? then Hester had an ape. Hester uh -huh. had an ape. Okay, Mrs. We have to uh, take a break here to listen to Esther Satterfield. Oh, she's in your a notebook. song she's right here. stylist. That's right. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a thrill to have Esther Satterfield with us all week, and here again she is. Yeah, of course. <laughs>
What do doctors recommend to avoid constipation? These days, doctors stress the importance of fiber in the diet. Food fiber that helps the system regulate itself naturally. Metamucil is made from natural fiber, no chemical stimulants. So for occasional constipation, doctors recommend Metamucil more often than any other laxative. The way to overcome constipation is the natural way. But if not nature, Metamucil. Mrs. Munson, you have arthritis? Yes, I do. Then watch this pain reliever comparison. What for? They're all the same. Are they? Two regular tablets, 650 milligrams. These other pain relievers also, 650 milligrams. 650 milligrams. But this one is different, 800 milligrams. Anison. Anison has more pain relief. And a special combination of ingredients. Anison gives hours of relief from minor arthritis pain. I'll try Anison. Get the Anison difference. Of all times to get hemorrhoids. I got them when I was expecting, sis. What'd you do? Use Preparation H. Many find it gives temporary relief for hours from flare-ups. Combines active ingredients to relieve pain and itch. Sounds like real medicine. Even helps shrink swollen inflamed hemorrhoidal tissue. I'll try it. Well, since you're expecting, check with your doctor before using any medicine. Hi, sis. How goes it? Great, thanks to Preparation H. Uh -oh. Preparation H relieves pain and itch, helps shrink swelling. Help! Does anyone have a breath mint? Oh, here you go. Wait, try Breath Savers. They keep your breath fresh a long time. So do mine. Oh, but Breath Savers taste so cool and minty. So do mine. But Breath Savers are sugar-free. <laughs> sugar-free? Mm-hmm. Try one. Breath Savers are the sugar-free way to get long-lasting breath protection. Bursting all over with a minty cool breath freshener. I like Breath Savers mints, because they freshen your breath without sugar. If you get one for the... Best man. Back uh, to the television program. We're just about uh, ready to turn off the juice here. This is Carol Carol Rangoin. Ring on. Ring on. I'm awfully sorry from San Francisco. You've been taking minutes uh, of the show. Tell us what your son told you earlier about this whole project. Well, he said when he discovered that they would have to be read on the air if I had an ounce of sense in my head, we'd get out while the getting was good. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sound advice. Now, uh, go ahead, Carol, if you'll uh, begin there. Well, I was told to take copious notes, and so I don't uh, know how copious they are, but to begin with, David has on a gray suit with red stripes. That's right. Blue shirt, and red and blue tie. Mm -hmm. Do you have the uh, wardrobe for every audience member there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, starting with crew. <laughs> uh, Edwin Newman, who uh, gave the news update, had on a plaid suit. Plaid suit, yes. Uh, told us that Carter was in Yugoslavia and that the cost of living was going up. Of course, mm -hmm. that's not news. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the uh, fire on the 20th floor was interesting. I felt that uh, they didn't have a sprinkler system. Yeah, that was interesting. You build them that high and you don't put any water up there. Unbelievable. That makes sense. Unbelievable. Uh, next people on the show were Jane and Michael Stern, who are, have done some writing about traveling in America. Two books, one on restaurants and one on... Uh, Amazing America, which truly was, <laughs> uh, including the biggest ball of twine. That guy is kind of a jerk, wasn't he? That guy with the twine. Well, <laughs> yeah, the twine guy. Uh, we have to go. Let me interrupt you there. I want to thank, uh, of course, Edwin Newman, uh, Frank Owens yes, in the orchestra, uh, Mrs. Marv Mindenhall, Bob Sarlat, and uh, everybody else. We'll continue tomorrow. Thank you, folks. Bye bye. <laughs> Can industry keep up with the Japanese? What can we do to work smarter, not harder? An NBC white paper looks at American productivity Tuesday.
NBC Nightly News follows the presidential party to Yugoslavia, where President Carter will try to warm up a chilled relationship. Coverage tonight on the NBC Nightly News.